And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. So Fisto caught my eye for two reasons. One, it's about food, and I like food, and I like to talk about food, and yay. Two, the game is extremely bright and colorful. It seems like a lot of Euro games these days have muted colors and dour looking people on them and just generally are about trading in the Mediterranean or some sort of boring theme like that. This one looks exciting and interesting. I mean, it's still going to be, I mean, uh, well, I know what it is because I played it. It's going to be collecting cubes and turning in those cubes for things, uh, meals to get points and like that. And so, you know, it's a typical kind of game in that regard, but I just like that theme. Now, the question is, though, whether I like the theme or not, is, is it a good game? Let's find out. In this game, each player is going to get a different character, and your character is trying to make delicious meals. You're going to start here. There's going to be these seven different spots here, or six different spots, plus the seventh is the grocery store, where the trolls are selling the different ingredients, the pixies are selling ingredients, the orcs are selling ingredients, etc. Each round of the game, whoever is the first player is going to roll these dice like this. First, you're going to bring down three ingredients, or four if you're playing a five-player game, to each spot and add one ingredient to the grocery store of each type. The numbers that are rolled here are going to be closed. This is the morning time. So in the morning time, one, five, and six are closed. It's possible when you roll these that the same numbers roll twice, so only two locations would be closed. Then, in turn order, each player is going to go through the different workers they have and place one or more of them out. So maybe I'll place these three out like this. You do not have to place all your workers out, and you can you can only place them on spots that are open. After everybody has done such a thing, so maybe these workers have all been placed, some are placed down here like this. When that's finished, then you go to the afternoon where the dice are rolled again. In this case, we rolled a two, four, and a four. So the two location is closed and the four location is closed. And then on the player's next turn, they are required to put out all of their workers. So maybe red goes here. We're just going to kind of randomly put workers out in different spots. Remembering you can only go to spots that are open at any given point. So let's say it looks like this. Now, starting with the troll, after everyone has placed them, every spot is now open. Starting with the troll location, we look and see does someone have the majority? Red has the majority. They have the most here. So they have three. They are allowed to take all three off to take all the resources here. So let's say they do. All right, so they take all the resources. Now purple and blue each can use the special ability here, which is move one uh, cube from one location to another. So we would do this in turn order. So purple might say, I'm going to move one of these here. And blue would say, you know what, I'm also moving one of those here. We get to the next location. Neither one of these people has absolute majority. So then each person has the option. They can take one of these and move it to a new location. Purple declines that. Instead, they'll take theirs off and take one of the yellow resources. Red decides to move to this location instead. And then these are just going to stay here. And next turn, there will be five there instead of three. And you're going to go through each one of these. And whoever has the most can take all the cubes. Um, or... They, they, they can choose not to do that, and then for each person that you have there in turn order, one of them can use a special ability, and the other ones can take a cube for each person that you have. This one lets you move a cube from one spot to another. This lets you take that worker and put them on a spot that hasn't been done yet. This one lets you claim a recipe over here with that worker. Only you can get that recipe, and you can get it for uh, one cheaper. Here you get a salt, which is a wild resource. Uh, here, you can trade in one resource for two, and here, you, you each player has two discs. You can put discs down on the board, and these will count as workers for next turn. In the grocery store, you can take resources. That's the only real special ability here, and whoever has the most will be going first next turn. Although, at the beginning of a round, whoever has the first player card is going, has the ability to hand it to somebody else. So, taking first player, maybe you want to go first, maybe you want to go last. First lets you 
get stuff before other people do, but last means you get to see where everyone else places their workers. Also, I didn't mention at the beginning of a round, the rounds, there's four rounds in the game. A random event card will be drawn for each of the four events, and it will do various things um, that will change the rules of the game. After everyone has collected their resources, then players can, if they want to, make recipes. Each recipe has a certain cost on it. So this one costs three green cubes and two of another color. This one here costs three orange cubes and three of another color. It shows two there, but it's in this column, so that's an extra cube of that color. You, so I could use three oranges and three yellows. I could not use three oranges, a pink, and two greens. They all The rest of them would have to be the same color. And so you'll see this is two and two, one and three, three and two, and four and one. And then they're each worth a certain number of points at the end of the game. You can also go up here and take these recipes. This is six of one color, and that's one of each of the colors. And when these are taken, these will slide over, and more will show up if possible. And players have the possibility to get more than one recipe per turn. If you're playing the advanced game, the recipes will also give you bonuses when you do them. Like this one here lets you do a recipe for a cheaper price. Some will let you take more cubes. As you get these recipes, they also give you special abilities. You'll also notice there's victory points up here. Sometimes cards and things will give you victory points. At the end of the game, you will get bonus victory points based on how many of the different types of recipes that you have done. You also get one point for each uh, cube you have left over. You add those to all the recipes you've done, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Okay, I like the components for the most part. I really like that they're super bright and colorful, right? That's just amazing and a lot of fun. I'm not as keen on the fact that they included yellow and, and uh, blue and red as player colors, and they're also the same color as the cubes. That's something I feel like could have been avoided. They're not perfect matches, but they're pretty close. The actual treats themselves look pretty good. I like the fact that gray simply means any cube, so they're pretty easy to figure out. Uh... I, I mean, again, I'm kind of, yes, they're cubes, but this whole game looks really cool. The event cards is maybe my one area where there's a problem. I think they're not that hard to figure out what they do. They're all numbered, and the game comes with a sheet that tells you exactly what each event card does. But, I don't know, I just wish that this wasn't necessary. I wish they just had a set with the English words on the cards. So, this card here is number six. And this one says, when you do addition to cooking phase, you can basically mix ingredients for these. They don't have to be the same. This one here says, for each different one you've done, you get a victory point. This lets you move two of your guys. I mean, they're usually pretty obvious what they do, but not always and completely. Uh, but that's really my only other negative thing. Other than that, I'm thrilled with the bright and colorful nature of these components. There's a lot of things to like with Festo. I especially like the way the worker placement works. First of all, uh, you know, you're going to have up to three areas canceled out. And so maybe one is open. So I put one worker in one. I'm like, I don't know. I really want to go to the two area, but it's not open. So I'm going to bank that it's open the second round. And I'm going to only put one guy here and hope that no one else does. And then that area gets shut down and I get it for one. That would be great. So there's some nice back and forth. And I should pause here to say, this game looks light and fluffy and fun. And it's really thinky, really thinky. Because you have to sit there, all the spots have good, powerful special abilities. Move the cubes from other people's spots. Move your guy into a spot to give you a majority. Uh, reserve a dinner and get it for a cheaper one. Uh, the salt, which is wild, which actually sounds like the most powerful one, but I think might be one of the weaker ones. Having two extra workers in the following round seems like something you always want to do. In fact, you might think in round four that's worthless. Well, round four just gives you two victory points instead. It just There's some really cool things. And so you're moving stuff around. You have two different worker placement games. Reminds me a little bit of Vidi Culture, where you had two C's in to place your workers. Going last is great because you have a great advantage. You get to stop other people. You can figure out where people are going. But at the same time, when it comes time to get the goods, going last is not nearly as exciting because they usually will be gone. I might have the full majority in a spot, and then I'll sit there and go, I could take all these cubes or... If I don't take them, I can get one of, you know, two of the cubes and use the special ability of the spot and maybe all three of the cubes if the other people don't take them, but one person goes before me. So every move you make in this game, you're sitting there going, I'll do that, but if they do that, 
And so possibly if someone takes a long time to think about all these things, they could slow the game down. But I feel like the game is a pretty good length. It says an hour in a box. It's probably a little longer than an hour. Uh, but the theme about getting ingredients to make food, I, like I said, I'm a big fan of that. But I was really surprised at just how involved the game was. Turn phase one goes pretty quickly. Phase two, there's things that are changed from the last turn. You're trying to collect things. I'm not sure how balanced all the points are. I've definitely seen some wild point swings in the game. But overall, it's very entertaining to play. I like it a lot. Um, I was certainly biased by the theme into hoping the game was good. I was surprised that it was deeper than I expected and thinkier, but it comes across as something I like a lot. I like worker placement games that makes you think and not and reward the people who go first and last almost equally in a pretty neat way. Some minor production flaws with the colors and the event cards, but other than that, really neat. Definitely one to check out. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs>